This lecture is going to be Amino Acids Part 3. And we're going to start this lecture off by looking at the, uh, the remaining four proteinogenic amino acids. These are the amino acids uh, that are proteinogenic amino acids, or amino acids that are found in proteins. Uh, these last four amino acids are going to be amphipathic. They have a region that can be considered hydrophobic and a region that can be considered hydrophilic. These four amphipathic amino acids are lysine, methionine, tryptophan, and tyrosine. Uh, and after this, we may talk about, in this lecture, we may or may not talk about uh, the amino acid derivatives that can be found in other organisms or that can be uh, used in other, for other purposes uh, like neurotransmitters and hormones. But let's for now let's just talk about the four amphipathic amino acids. The first amphipathic amino acid is going to be butyl amine, no, it's going to be lysine. The first amphipathic amino acid is going to be lysine, but the parent of its functional group or the parent of its R group is going to be butyl amine or butamine. And so it's just a four carbon uh, alkane with an amino group. So let's first draw butyl amine. CH3. CH2, 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 and then the amino group NH2. So this compound, I guess I should have it drawn the same all the way across. Let's just put CH2 here. CH3, rather. This compound has two names. Butyl off. Butylamine, or we can call it butamine. And so this compound is the side chain, or it's the parent of the R group of lysine. Okay. And most, more often than not, This hydrogen here is going to be, or this amino group, is going to be protonated. So you're going to have an ammonium group here. And lysine has a charge there. So that's the, that's the parent of our side chain, butylamine or butamine. And it follows the methyl attachment rule. All, all of the uh, amphipathic amino acids follow the methyl attachment rule. So, of course, the alpha carbon is going to attach to this carbon. Okay, let's, let's, let's move this to the side. Let's make it a little smaller. And move it out the way. And now let's draw our entire amino acid, lysine. Uh, so lysine is going to be in H, 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 alpha carbon, it's hydrogen, our carboxylic acid functional group, and then butyl amine, CH2. CH2, 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 NH3. And so this is the amino acid lysine. The amino acid lysine. Okay. And so the functional, the parent of the functional group for lysine is butylamine or butamine. So next we have to come up with a 
some sort of association phrase so we can link uh, in our minds lysine with butylamine uh, life life is a beautiful thing okay life is a beautiful thing lysine butyl amine or but amine there you are uh, that's the best I can come up with for this one Life is a beautiful thing. Okay, and this is the amino acid lysine. Hope that you can remember it. The next amphipathic amino acid is going to be methionine. Uh, we're going to start with the parent of the R group or the parent compound of the side chain. For methionine, that parent group is going to be ethyl methyl sulfide so let's draw that structure let's draw the structure of ethyl methyl sulfide so we're going to have an ethyl group CH3 CH2 and over here we're going to have a methyl group CH3 and joining the two we're going to have a sulfur. So this compound is ethyl methyl sulfide. And we can abbreviate it EMS. Ethyl methyl sulfide. Now, methionine follows the methyl attachment rule. But now we have a problem. Because there's a methyl group here and there's a methyl group here. But remember this. All amino acids attach to the methyl group in such a way as to make that carbon chain as long as possible. So it's going to attach to this methyl group here because that makes the carbon chain longer. Okay, So now let's draw the amino acid methionine. Okay. We have NHHH alpha carbon with its hydrogen carboxylic acid group and now for our ethyl methyl sulfide CH2 CH2 S CH3 and so this is the amino acid methionine with its ethyl methyl sulfide side chain okay now we need to make an association between methionine and ethyl methyl sulfide or EMS and I came up with this one uh, I'm gonna pause this for just a moment okay let us continue now uh, this is the sentence I'm gonna come up with think about this sometimes uh, people try to make methamphetamines but they end up causing an explosion. So here this shows you a meth lab explosion. People have a meth lab in their home then the, uh, the chemicals explode and they have this huge explosion. Then uh, emergency uh, agencies have to come to the home to help the victims. And so I've come up with this sentence here. I'm just going to put this to the side.
let's say meth lab explosion victims were treated by EMS and EMS emergency medical services and meth of course is going to be methionine I'll help you remember methionine okay let's make that a little bigger and let's kind of highlight it a little and so here we have meth will help you remember methionine and EMS will help you remember ethyl methyl sulfide okay. so meth lab explosion victims were treated by EMS this is amino acid methionine I hope you can remember it the next amphipathic amino acid is going to be the amino acid tryptophan uh, tryptophan is kind of a famous amino acid because uh, a lot of people believe that it's uh, there's a lot of tryptophan in turkey and that the amino acid tryptophan makes you sleepy and so that's gonna we're gonna use that to our, our advantage later on uh, but let's first identify the parent R group for tryptophan it is a bicyclic heterocyclic compound called indole indole and it looks like this uh, then we're going to have at the bottom of endole we're going to have one nitrogen in endole one double bond there. And so the compound is, as it's written here is endo. Okay. But we're going to go one step beyond that. Remember, uh, this is not one of the exceptions. This has to follow the methyl attachment rule. So there is no methyl group. So we're going to have to do something about that. So let's group this. Let's make another one. So you have to add a methyl group. So what we're going to do here, we're going to add a methyl group right here. CH3. Oops. Wow. going to undo here. Okay, now I'm going to... Oh, there we are. not wanting to work for me. Let's see if we can get it to work now. Let's see. Okay, here we are. And so this is endo. Now we're going to add a methyl group to endo. CH3. Now we have something to make our methyl attachment rule. Now this is no longer endo. This is one of the One of the many methyl endoles. So this is methyl endole. Okay, and so now we know where the attachment is going to take place because there's only one methyl group now. Only one methyl group there. So let us now draw tryptophan. This is going to be pretty simple now. So let's move this over here. Let's draw tryptophan. So we're going to have C. Wow. Sorted that out wrong. N H H H, our amino group with the charge. Alpha carbon with its hydrogen. C-O-O-H and now 
for metal metal indo and there we have the amino acid tryptophan now remember I told you that tryptophan is an amino acid that makes you sleepy so we're going to use this to our advantage uh, there was a show that used to come on a while back called the Seinfeld show and on this on this particular episode uh, George and Jerry uh, Jerry Seinfeld had this girlfriend she had all of these toys these antique toys that they wanted to play with and so they went over to her house and they gave her lots of turkey uh, which presumably had lots of tryptophan in it so that it would make her sleepy and when she fell asleep then they would play with her toys and I'm going to show you this video clip I'm going to I don't know how I'm going to do it but I'm going to show you this video clip let's say now let's wait and see if it plays <laughs> More wine and turkey? So when I saw George on the street with an 18-pound turkey and a giant box of wine, I thought, what a coincidence. We're just about to eat. What is that stuff in turkey that makes you sleepy? Tryptophan. I think. Have some more wine. What video did you get? Oh, George brought home movies of his boyhood trip to Michigan. Four hours. More heavy gravy. <laughs> okay, I think the video clip is over now. Uh, now let's come. Let's now create uh, our statement, our association phrase. Okay, let's put it here. Uh, what was it? Yes, tryptophan ingestion is met with indolence. And that helps us in two ways. Uh, it's just fortuitous that, the, that the, the side chain on tryptophan is indole, has indole in it. And indole means sleepy. Uh, and tryptophan makes you sleepy, so I don't know. I actually thought the word indole had something to do with sleepiness but it doesn't. So here we're going to put tryptophan ingestion well we need to capitalize tryptophan we'll just use the amino acid tryptophan ingestion is met with indolence and indolence it's just laziness. And so if you're sleepy, you're going to be kind of lazy. And so tryptophan ingestion is met with sleepiness or laziness. Okay. And this should this one should make a whole lot of sense here. Tryptophan is tryptophan. Ingestion is met methyl endo. Tryptophan ingestion is met with indolence. And that should help you remember the amino acid tryptophan. Uh, hope you remember it. The last of our amphipathic amino acids is the amino acid tyrosine. Uh, we don't have to learn, uh, we don't need any sort of, uh, what do we call it, an association phrase for a tyrosine. All you have to do for tyrosine is to add an OH to phenylalanine. But if you want to know what the side chain of tyrosine is, it is simply a phenol. And this is a benzene ring with an OH. And we call this phenol. And now, but to draw tyrosine, all we have to do is draw phenylalanine and draw an OH. So we know phenylalanine is just alanine. Okay, this is the amino acid. Let's draw alanine C H C O O H. 
and now let's draw. H, H, H. Okay. This is alanine. To draw phenylalanine, get rid of the H. phenyl ring. That's phenylalanine. To get to tyrosine, all we do is add an OH. And this is amino acid tyrosine. This is the last of our hydro, the last of our amphipathic amino acids. And there is no association trace rate. Just add an OH to phenylalanine. And that is all of our amphipathic amino acids and that's all of our 20 amino acids. On this slide I've listed some uncommon proteinogenic amino acids. These are amino acids that can be found in proteins but are very uncommon. I'm not going to draw the structure of these I just want you to be aware of them because there are some other amino acid derivatives that are more important for us. Uh, let's look at these here. Uh, selenocysteine and pyrolysine. These are more common than the remaining four. 5-hydroxylysine, 4-hydroxyproline, gamma carboxyglutamic acid, and pyroglutamic acid. And so these are six uncommon proteinogenic amino acids. Uh, and that's all we're going to say about these. We're going to learn any structures. On this slide, we're going to look at derivatives of the amino acid tyrosine. Derivatives of the amino acid tyrosine. Let's, uh, let's draw tyrosine here. Okay. <laughs> we're going to have our... Just going to put NH3 here. CH, COOH, CH2, okay, this is the amino acid tyrosine, well, let's do this, okay, this is tyrosine, T-Y-R, okay, we've already seen that one, let's take this amino acid, We can create a lot of compounds from this very simple amino acid. Okay, this is tyrosine. Let's make a copy of this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to hydroxylate tyrosine. All we're going to do is add a hydroxyl group here. And now that converts tyrosine to a neurotransmitter. That converts tyrosine to the neurotransmitter DOPA. Now we're going to take DOPA. Let's go ahead and group this. We're going to take DOPA, make a copy of it. We're going to move, try to move these things over. Okay, there it is. There's that one. Here's DOPA. Well, the second one is DOPA. And what we're going to do now is we're going to remove the carboxyl group from DOPA. We're simply going to have the hydrogen here. And now this amino acid is no longer DOPA. This amino acid is dopamine.
This amino acid is dopamine. Okay, we're going to group this. Let's get one more derivative. Well, we can get two more. So that's dopamine. Okay, let's make another one here. Let's do something else here. Now let's to this alpha carbon. I'm going to put it right here. To this alpha carbon, let's add an OH or a hydroxyl group. Uh, let's use this color here. So I'm going to get rid of one of these H's. I'm going to add an OH. And now this is no longer dopamine. We've hydroxylated dopamine. And when we do that, we convert convert dopamine into norepinephrine. Norepinephrine. this and we'll do one more because these are kind of important uh, let's see if I have room here actually what I'm going to do I'm going to make the first three smaller since we've already talked about them I'm going to make them smaller okay very good so I'm going to move these over and move this over here and the last one, I'm going to put this one right here. That's norepinephrine. So I'm going to make a copy of it and put it here. And we're going to get, oops, I didn't make a copy. Let's make sure I get a copy. i got to have a copy because I want to keep norepinephrine. So put this over here. So that's norepinephrine. And what we're going to do now is add a methyl group onto the amino group. So what we're going to do is get rid of this. We're going to have two of these. And now we're going to add a methyl group here. And now this is no longer norepinephrine. It is simply epinephrine. And so these are all derivatives of tyrosine. And all of these are called, let's see, except for tyrosine, all of these are called catecholamines. So all of these derivatives of tyrosine are called catecholamines. And these are neurotransmitters. These are, these are our catecholamines. And the last one, epinephrine, is also known as adrenaline. And you can see they're not, uh, they're not really a, well, dopamine is an amino acid. Yeah, dopamine is an, an amino acid, but, I mean, excuse me, dopa is an amino acid, but dopamine is not an amino acid. It just has an amino group. Norepinephrine is not an amino acid, and epinephrine is not an amino acid. But they are amino acid. All of them are amino acid derivatives, and they're all catecholamines, except for tyrosine is not a catecholamine. So these are derivatives of the amino acid tyrosine. Okay, on this slide, we're going to look at a glutamate derivative, just one, just one glutamate derivative. So let's first draw glutamate. So we have NH. Our alpha carbon with its hydro with its hydrogen, our carboxylic acid group. Carbon
oxalic acid group here. CH2, CH2. Okay, and so this is going to be, uh, this is glutamate. Now we have to number these carbons. Uh, order of precedence, uh, carboxylic acid, the carboxylic acid group here is going to get the greatest precedence, of course. And so this carbon is going to be the alpha carbon. This is the beta carbon. Gamma carbon and the delta carbon. So that's the order of precedence. So this is glutamate. So I'm just going to write here. Well, I just put glutamate. Okay. And I'm going to make a copy of this because I'm going to change some things. But I'm going to make one change here. So let's let's group all of this together. Let's make a copy of glutamate. So I'm going to move it over here. Okay, this is glutam still glutamate, so let's first thing let's do is just get rid of the name because this is not going to be glutamate soon. And so what's going to happen? This carb, this uh, glutamate is going to lose this carboxyl group, so you're going to lose the carboxyl group here, and now you're going to have you're going to have an H here, and so now. The numbering system is going to change because this is no this the order of precedence has shifted. The carboxyl group up here gave this carboxyl group gave this this end of the of this compound the highest precedence, the highest priority. But now it's shifted down here. And so now the alpha carbon is no longer up there this now becomes the alpha carbon. So the alpha carbon is here now because this has the greatest precedence. This is beta and then this is the gamma carbon now. So now this this uh, compound now has a new, a new name of course. It's no longer glutamate but if you just look at these four carbons here this is just going to circle this. If we just had this here, this would be butanoic acid. So this would be butanoic acid. We also call butanoic acid is the same thing as butyric acid. B U T Y R I C. Butyric acid. Now, because this butyric acid has an amino group attached to the gamma carbon, we can call this gamma, I'm just going to spell it out here, gamma amino butyric acid, G-A-B-A. -A. This is a very potent inhibitory neurotransmitter, GABA. This is the neurotransmitter, GABA. It's a potent inhibitory neurotransmitter and it's derived from glutamate. All you have to do or I should I shouldn't have called it glutamate, I should have called it glutamic acid. Because that's what we have here is glutamic acid. And so GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter derived from glutamic acid. All you have to do is decarboxylate. Decarboxylate glutamic acid, the alpha, the one that's next to the alpha carbon. Uh, decarboxylate, the one that's not in the side chain. Decarboxylate that amino acid and you immediately convert glutamic acid into gamma amino butyric acid. And this, this neurotransmitter is very important in the central nervous system. And that's all we have to say about our glutamate derivatives. On this slide, we're going to look at um, a tryptophan derivative, and well, let's just let's just get right to it.
a derivative of tryptophan and this is going to be another neurotransmitter so first let's draw tryptophan remember the side chain of tryptophan is methyl endo methyl endo tryptophan ingestion is met with indolence methyl indole so let's just draw tryptophan here just gonna just NH3 CH COOH and now for my methyl indole CH2 This is the amino acid tryptophan. Now we can number Oh, I have a double bond here. Now we can number our ring on tryptophan. So let's number this these carbons. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, those are our carbons. And this is tryptophan. I'm not going to label it there. That's tryptophan. Let's see if we have everything. Or I'm going to have to, okay, I'm going to have to do it this way. And now let's group it all. Okay. And now what we're going to do, we're going to take this and move it over here. Okay, that's good. Okay, now the first thing that's going to happen to tryptophan uh, is that we're going to we're going to rem we're going to do two things. I'm just going to do both things now. They don't happen in this order, but things will make more sense if I do it this way. They don't happen in this order. So the first thing that happens, well. This is not the first thing, but this is what I'm going to do first. I'm going to remove the carbox, the carboxylic acid group here. And now this compound is not is no longer tryptophan. It is tryptamine. So this is trypt Now we have excuse me. Now we have tryptamine. Now what we're going to do here, we're going to do the, the next thing we're going to do to this is right here on this five carbon, we're going to add a hydroxyl group. So now this compound is no longer tryptamine; it is five hydroxy, five hydroxy tryptamine. It's often abbreviated 5-HT, and this is this is the neurotransmitter, the very important neurotransmitter, serotonin. And serotonin is often associated with a, feel, a feeling of well-being and happiness. So if you have lots of serotonin being produced in your body, you're going to feel pretty happy. And so this is our tryptophan derivative, serotonin or 5-hydroxy tryptamine. And remember, the biosynthesis goes in the reverse order. You don't decarboxylate first, you hydroxylate first, then you decarboxylate. I just decarboxylated first so you'll know where the word uh, tryptamine came from. Okay? And this is, the, this is the neurotransmitter serotonin. Our last amino acid derivative is going to be a derivative of histidine. Histidine. And remember for histidine, his problem was met with an immediate solution. 
So histidine has an imidazole ring on it. So let's draw histidine here. NH3, the, carbo the alpha carbon, the carboxylic acid group. And so for imidazole, remember, C, C, N, N, C. Just join them together. There's a double bond here and a double bond in either one of these. It doesn't matter. H. And if you put an H here, uh, that would make it, that would give it a positive charge. And we won't put one here for now. So this is going to be, uh, this is the amino acid histidine. Now, the derivative of histidine is, is a compound that very strongly mediates the inflammatory response. And it causes bronchiolar constriction. So for a person who like who's uh, who may have asthma or something like that, his this next derivative is dangerous. So that's his histamine histamine on the. Oops, I didn't make a copy of it. I don't think I have it yet. Okay, I'm gonna make it. A little, well, I'm gonna make it smaller. Yeah, I'm gonna make it a little smaller so I can write the name under here. Okay, and all we have to do. The only thing we're going to do here is remove the carboxyl group. Move the carboxyl group there and put an H. And now this compound is histamine. Histamine uh, causes inflammation and histamine causes bronchiolar constriction. So it's a very it can be very bad, uh, especially for people who have asthma. Histamine can be, be very bad, and so this is the uh, this is the compound histamine. Uh, it's formed simply by decarboxylating histidine, and this is our last amino acid derivative, and we're completely finished with amino acids. The three lecture series, I think this is a three lecture series on amino acids, is complete.